welcome to CivilNet. As part of our continuing effort to understand things, Turkish, uh, what is going on in Turkey, both politically as well as socially, we have the pleasure today of speaking with Etienne Mahchubian in Istanbul. Etienne Mahchubian is a journalist, a columnist, a public intellectual in the tradition that Turkey still has. Etienne, thank you for joining us on CivilNet. You're welcome. Your most recent column in today's Zaman uh, basically leads me to ask the following question. It seems that despite the corruption scandal, despite everything that's been going on in Turkey, the problem in Turkey is the opposition problem, not the AK party problem or Erdogan. Is that fair? Well, it's, I think it's the 50% of the uh, really uh, what's going on. I mean, uh, if people are not uh, giving uh, their votes to the opposition, of course, it's up to the opposition to behave accordingly and, you know, uh, to kind of uh, give a perspective regarding the future in Turkey, which they cannot do. But that's, I think, uh, one half of the problem. The other half is the uh, general idea and uh, acceptance in the conservative public uh, that there is a coup there is an intervention to the government affairs uh, by the Gülenist movement. And uh, that was another uh, cause, I think, uh, that uh, they, they chose to give their votes to AK Party. Uh, because there was, a, again, a relation and kind of a coalition, as it is called, between the, between the opposition and Gülenist movement. Uh, so they took it that the opposition were on the side of the uh, intervention and coup. Uh, so it was one of the, it was the reason to support AK Party. So you're saying that the mixture of issues that led to Erdogan's victory is the sort of predictable idea about the future that they associate with Erdogan on the yes. one hand, and on mm -hmm. the other hand, this fear of what they perceive to be happening from with outside influence. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, and of course, uh, there is a kind of a deeper reason, uh, if you may say so. Uh, after 10 years, now when they look back, the conservative public, uh, they realize that they have won so much in those 10 years. And anything that goes back uh, to the 1990s, for example, uh, will be very, very uh, jeopardizing for them. And they, they don't want to lose all those advantages. So there is a big threat that they feel. And uh, that's why, I mean, they are, they are ready to accept the, the faults and mistakes of AK Party quite readily. Do you think that those faults and mistakes will be on the agenda between now and the August presidential elections? Or do you think the issues will continue to be uh, prosperity, economic issues, as well as, of course, the outside intervention perceptions? Well, well that, that depends on the threat perception of the public. You know, if, if, if they think that there is a threat perception as such, then I think they will go on uh, giving their support to AK Party and Tayyip Erdogan, and they will not think very much about those, uh, you know, uh, like corruption things and so on. But uh, if, or as soon as we get normalized, uh, I think those will be the issues. Uh, because in the, in the uh, surveys that we have done, for example, in Tessa, we, we saw that nearly two-thirds of the public Thinks, think that there is a corruption. You know. uh, but again, another two-thirds of the public think that there is an intervention to the to governmental affairs and there is an attempt for a coup. So uh, they, uh, it seems that they have uh, compared two wrongs in these elections. The, the, it's not the case that we have a wrong on one side and a right on the other side. There are two wrongs and they have made a cho choice between these two wrongs and uh, of course, they chose the uh, the lighter, <laughs> if I may say so, the wrong. How how uh, has it been this split among public into intellectuals in Turkey? People like you, who are perceived as progressive, um, and others of your colleagues, all mm -hmm. of whom had wishes, hopes 
in the AK party's continuing progress, some of whom have fallen by the wayside and said, no, this isn't what we bet for, and some of whom, like you, are saying, I'm still going to put my eggs in this basket because there's a track record. How has that uh, discord or argument between public intellectuals moved the debate? Well, I think this this is a very complicated thing, a psychological problem uh, with the especially uh, intelligentsia of the secular uh, side. Uh, now, we, we I think this is the seculars thought for a good time that um, they were the real uh, the force behind this behind this democratic process and so on. So as soon as AK Party tried to create its own intelligentsia and uh, started thinking that, especially the prime minister started thinking that uh, some of the liberals and democrats, as they call themselves, uh, are not really uh, in support of AK Party or in support of the conservatives in Turkey, but they are after their own careers and so on, then there, there was a split. Uh, from that moment on, uh, I think we are going through a psychological thing. That is, some of the liberals and, and the leftists, uh, they, they started thinking that we are approaching such a political situation where they are useless anymore. Where, you know, they are out of the, out of the game. So in order to get into the game again, they were they became the opposition, an intellectual opposition to our party. But uh, as far as I see it, uh, they lost track of reality, because there is uh, the most important thing is what is going on in the population itself. I mean, it, in the society, not in our minds. So they created a virtual reality as far as I see it. And the, the, the real world uh, w w was more successful than those uh, virtual reality uh, supporters. Regardless of whether we agree with them or not. Yes, surely. Um, let me ask you a question that I don't ask your colleagues. We speak to you know, several Turkish uh, public intellectuals. I don't know how else to refer to your class. And it's, it's wonderful to be able to have these dialogues. This is a question I can only ask you. Your last name is Mahchubian. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that put you any more in a different category than the rest, or have you earned your wings and you, your perspectives are simply political perspectives? Well, uh, it's difficult to answer that. <laughs> you know, someone else should answer that. Looking at me, you know, I, when I'm I am saying it on behalf of myself, I, well, I, I, I'm an Armenian, of course, and uh, and that also. I think is influential on my choices because, again, when, when we look at the uh, agenda that we had in the last 10 years and if we, if we compare to what we go, we've, gone, we've gone through in the Republic, you know, of eight years of Republic, I mean, we can ask any Armenian and we will be told that this last 10 years is much better than the 80 years that we had. Why? Because maybe this uh, government is kind of paternalistic as compared to the authoritarian uh, Republican view. And that brings us a, a kind of an Ottoman touch. And that Ottoman touch, I think, is was helpful to the Armenians and so on, all non-Muslims. And uh, I, I mean, I cannot deny that that also is or should be one of the factors that, you know, is influencing my view. But as far as I'm looking at the uh, political uh, situation uh, in Turkey, my stance from that point on is not an Armenian stance as such. You know, I, I'm, I'm an uh, Anatolian or, or maybe an Ottoman myself, an intellectual, and uh, I, 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 my choices are according to that stance as far as I see it. If you don't mind, I would love to have another dialogue with you specifically on that Ottomanness, because mm -hmm. Neo-Ottoman is thrown around so much, especially in the international press. And it's interesting to see from the inside out how that is perhaps defined. Let me ask you one last question. I promise it's the last. When you say the changes of the last 10 years, you're saying basically the AK party's term. And those of us who say the changes of the last seven years, because we're talking from the point of assassination of your friend and mine, mm -hmm. Harant Ding, is it 
fair to say that even that incredible event, were it another time and another administration, would not have been such a transformative point? Is that fair? Well, the thing is, transformation had started before, of course, the assassination, and uh, Hrant was a part of it. So uh, it, it's uh, maybe it, it is. It was one of the reasons that he was chosen one of as one of the you know uh, uh, people to be killed. You know, uh, so uh, to me, it obviously he, he is himself and his assassination is a part of this whole transformation process. And you know, uh, the, when we look, when we when we talk to to the new uh, intelligentsia of the uh, Islamic community as well, uh, well, they will say the same thing. You know, people are aware that uh, this is a transformation where many people from outside the Islamic community have also helped a lot, and Hrant was one of them, obviously. As always, it's great to talk to you. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you for talking you, to sir. us today, Etienne Mahjoubian, about the elections in Turkey last week and uh, what it means uh, from various perspectives. Thank you for following us on CivilNet.